Picture this, a dimly lit movie theater, the scent of buttery popcorn wafting through the air, and the anticipation that comes with experiencing something truly magical on the silver screen. The year is 1955, a time when technicolor dreams and vibrant musicals dominated the cinematic landscape. And in the midst of this era, Guys and Dolls made its dazzling entrance, captivating hearts and minds with its catchy tunes, charming characters, and unforgettable moments. Can you still recall that very first encounter with this cinematic gem? Perhaps you were transported to the bustling streets of New York City, where gamblers and showgirls danced to the rhythm of life, their stories intertwining in ways both hilarious and heartwarming. Maybe you found yourself tapping your feet to the infectious beats of Luck Be A Lady or chuckling at the witty banter between Nathan Detroit and Sky Masterson. As the story unfolded, you couldn't help but be drawn into the world of high stakes and higher emotions, where bets were placed not only on dice but on love itself. The chemistry between Marlon Brando and Gene Simmons, the on-screen magic created by Frank Sinatra and Vivian Blaine, these moments etched themselves into the tapestry of your cinematic memory. And now, as you reflect on that initial rendezvous with guys and dolls, your mind brims with snapshots of joy, laughter, and the undeniable sensation of being a part of something truly special. But what about the tidbits that remain hidden behind the scenes? Those intriguing nuggets of information that add layers to the story and the making of this classic. Well, dear reader, today is your day to delve into the lesser known facts about guys and dolls. From the behind the scenes camaraderie to the unexpected challenges faced during production, each nugget of knowledge will enhance your appreciation for the film that continues to capture hearts even after all these years. So, let's pull back the curtains and reveal the secrets that make Guys and Dolls shine even brighter, 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 brighter. Unveiling the fiery facts behind Guys and Dolls, a cinematic tale in the vibrant tapestry of 1950s cinema, few films can rival the charm and wit of Guys and Dolls. Amidst the bustling streets of New York City, this cinematic gem brings to life the electric energy of Broadway and the playful camaraderie between gamblers and showgirls. Beneath its glitzy exterior, the tension between its leading men, Marlon Brando and Frank Sinatra, simmers like an underground dice game. However, it's the curious case of the three-horse parlay that truly piques intrigue, weaving an unexpected thread between high-stakes bets and biblical lore. At the heart of the story, suave gambler Sky Masterson references a peculiar parlay involving three steeds, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Delving into the biblical realm, these names are no mere coincidence. They hark back to the Book of Daniel, where the pious Jewish youths resisted bowing to the image of Nebuchadnezzar, earning their fiery fate. A three-horse parlay, comprising three winners from separate races, is no small feat, akin to defying the odds, much like the trio did in antiquity. However, the film's allure is limited to its spiritual undertones. The dynamic between Marlon Brando and Frank Sinatra, two iconic figures of their time, sizzles with a different kind of intensity. Brando's method acting prowess clashed with Sinatra's more traditional approach. The friction began early as Brando reached out to Sinatra, suggesting joint rehearsals for musical numbers. Sinatra's rejection, flavored with disdain for that method crap, became a defining moment in their on-set dynamic. The clash between old-school showmanship and the emerging method acting technique reverberated throughout the production, adding a layer of intrigue behind the scenes. Yet, it's Marlon Brando's musical numbers that truly intrigue. Crafted from an intricate mosaic of multiple takes, his performances are a testament to cinematic magic. Piecing together fragments to construct seamless harmonies and rhythms, the audio engineer sculpted Brando's songs, allowing him to shine as the charming, albeit unconventional, singer. In a world of dazzling lights and memorable characters, Guys and Dolls remains an enduring classic. Beyond its glitzy veneer, the intertwining threads of historical, biblical, and artistic elements unveil a tapestry of complexities that continues to captivate audiences, even decades later. As the dice roll and the city pulses with life, this film stands as a testament to the convergence of talent, tension, and imagination, etching itself into the annals of cinematic history. In the world of celluloid dreams, Guys and Dolls dared to be more than just a roll of the dice. It became a multifaceted gem reflecting both the magic and the intrigue of its era. Of its era. Of its Sinatra serenade in Brando's battle, untold stories of the 1955 film Guys and Dolls in the vibrant world of Broadway adaptations. The 1955 film Guys and Dolls shines as a classic. While the movie dazzles with its vivacious charm and unforgettable numbers, behind-the-scenes tales add layers of intrigue to its legacy. One revelation that often escapes the spotlight is the alteration of key songs. The silver screen version introduced tunes like A Woman in Love, Pet Me Papa, and Adelaide, absent from the original Broadway rendition. Interestingly, the titular song underwent a transformation. On Broadway, the role of Nathan Detroit, portrayed by Frank Sinatra, abstained from singing in the show's title track. However, the film's producers decided to tweak the script, amplifying Sinatra's vocal presence by having him croon this signature number. Yet, Sinatra's involvement was not without its challenges. 
his refusal to render Adelaide in character as the humorous Nathan Detroit raised eyebrows. Instead, he injected his trademark romantic crooner charm, a move that didn't align with the song's comedic essence. Composer Frank Loesser, less than thrilled by this twist, reportedly received a curt retort from Sinatra, well do it my way or you can explicit off. Another snag emerged when Sinatra's co-star Marlon Brando, embodying Sky Masterson, criticized Sinatra's singing approach. Brando urged director Joseph L. Mankiewicz to intervene, citing the conflict of having two romantic leads. Mankiewicz, however, dismissed the suggestion, causing a rift between Brando and the director that lasted beyond the production. Behind the scenes, the casting of Marlon Brando as Sky Masterson stirred its own tempest. Frank Sinatra, harboring aspirations for the very role, contested the decision vehemently. This casting dispute simmered, eventually giving way to Brando's portrayal of the suave gambler. Intriguingly, Sinatra later folded Sky Masterson's iconic number Luck Be a Lady into his own stage performances, carving an unexpected link between the two legends. In this tale of stars, songs, and shifting allegiances, Guys and Dolls reveals a world where creativity and ego collide. The film, cherished for its melodies and Manhattan-hued escapades, hides secrets of ambition, artistic tussles, and uncharted alliances. Ances, ances, ances. Guys and Dolls Unveiled, The Sky Masterson Enigma in the Dazzling Tapestry of Mid-20th Century New York, a tale of gamblers and dreamers captured hearts on the silver screen. The 1955 movie Guys and Dolls, adapted from Damon Runyon's vibrant universe, spun a web of romance and mischief that endures to this day. At its heart lies the enigmatic character of Sky Masterson, portrayed by Marlon Brando, a role rumored to be grounded in real-world intrigue. Whispers persist that Sky Masterson's essence finds its origins in the realm of fact, drawing inspiration from none other than William Barclay Bat Masterson. A former frontier marshal turned sports writer, Bat Masterson's life mirrored the escapades that painted the streets of Runyon's stories. Fanning these flames of speculation is the connection between Bat and Damon Runyon himself, both wielding quills for the New York Morning Telegraph. In a tale straight from the pages of Pulp Fiction, David Blaine's mysterious stranger contends that Sky Masterson held the distinction of successfully conning the infamous Al Capone. Yet, while reality and fiction intertwine in the character's DNA, the movie's roots are firmly planted in Runyon's prose. The narrative sprouted from Runyon's 1933 short story, The Idol of Miss Sarah Brown. The tale's radio rendition, aired on the Damon Runyon Theater in 1949, introduced Richard Egan as the voice of Sky Masterson, an actor embarking on a budding career. Beyond the characters, the film bears the unmistakable linguistic fingerprint of its creator. The stilted and formal dialogue, devoid of contractions, paints a portrait of a world where education is scarce and pretensions are high. This signature trait stems from Runyon's own writing style, eschewing contractions to accentuate characters' attempts to appear more sophisticated than they truly were. As the neon lights of Broadway fade into history, Guys and Dolls endures as a testament to the beguiling blend of reality and fiction. The specter of Bat Masterson and the mastery of Damon Runyon cast a spell that continues to captivate audiences, ensuring that the spirited dice rolls and romantic escapades of yesteryears remain evergreen. Marlon Brando's Thunderbird and the fickle winds of promotion in the shimmering lights of 1,955-second cinematic landscape. Guys and Dolls emerged as a star-studded musical spectacle that etched its name into the annals of Hollywood history. Amidst the glitz and glamour, a tale unfolded about the film's leading man, Marlon Brando, and his faithful white Thunderbird. Samuel Goldwyn, the film's producer, found himself so enamored with Brando's on-screen charisma and off-screen comportment that he bestowed upon him a gleaming white Thunderbird. The prized possession was not only a symbol of appreciation but also a gesture that sought to tighten Brando's involvement in the film's promotional activities. Brando, who typically shied away from the limelight, defied convention and embarked on a publicity journey for the film. Yet, like the New York weather, Brando's intentions swiftly changed. The allure of the White Thunderbird, it seemed, had a shorter shelf life than anticipated. The man who had initially embraced promotional efforts soon declared, I've done enough for that White Thunderbird, signaling an abrupt halt to his involvement. The promises of publicity withered, leaving Goldwyn's strategic gamble stranded on the bustling streets of Broadway. As the spotlight shifted, so did the intrigue surrounding the film's casting choices. Enter Marilyn Monroe, a luminous icon in her own right, who had her sights set on the role of Adelaide. However, fate had other plans, intertwined with director Joseph L. Mankiewicz's reservations about working with her again, following her cameo in All About Eve. Monroe's desires reached Mankiewicz's ears, but mysteriously, her phone messages seemed to vanish into thin air. Betty Grable, an ardent lover of animals, danced onto the stage of possibilities as a contender for the coveted role. Negotiations fluttered like Broadway curtains, until an unexpected twist took center stage. A devoted pet owner, Grable chose her ailing dogs while being over a meeting with Goldwyn, triggering a rift that could not be mended. 
the door closed on Grable's chances, and another star's aspirations dimmed. Among the melodrama of casting choices, a comedic anecdote stood out, the cheesecake debacle. Repeated takes of a scene starring Frank Sinatra and Marlon Brando required a pause when Sinatra, weighed down by an excessive cheesecake, claimed he couldn't stomach another bite. An inside joke revealed Brando's ingenious mischief, intentionally flubbing scenes to force Sinatra to consume copious slices of the dessert he despised. A twist of fate or just a slice of Hollywood humor, the following day saw a flawless scene take, unfazed by cheesecake-induced giggles. Dies and Dolls, the 1955 cinematic gem, shimmered not only with star power but also with tales of Thunderbirds, missed phone calls, and cheesecake-laden camaraderie. In the streets of New York and on the silver screen, its legacy endures as a colorful chapter in Hollywood's storied history. History. As the curtains draw close on our exploration of the cinematic gem that is Guys and Dolls, I invite you, dear reader, to step into the realm of nostalgia and reflect on the journey this 1955 masterpiece has taken you on. Just as the characters danced and sang their way through the vibrant streets of New York, perhaps you too have meandered through your own memories, intertwining the magic of this film with your own life story. Did you find yourself swaying to the tunes of Luck Be A Lady or chuckling at the quirky antics of Nathan Detroit? Maybe the fiery chemistry between Sky Masterson and Sarah Brown sparked a flame of inspiration within you. Whatever it was that captivated your heart, now is the time to unlock those cherished moments and share them with fellow enthusiasts. Guys and Dolls is more than a mere movie, it's a testament to the enduring power of love, music, and the hustle and bustle of urban life. It's a canvas where dreams and realities blend, where humor and emotion intertwine, leaving an indelible mark on the tapestry of cinematic history. Your personal connection to this classic is a brushstroke on that canvas, a unique hue that contributes to the overall masterpiece. So, as you bid adieu to the neon-lit streets and the unforgettable characters who called them home, take a moment to relive the magic that Guys and Dolls has woven into your life. Share your fondest memories, your most cherished scenes, and the emotions that it stirred within you. Your perspective adds depth and dimension to the rich legacy of this film. Thank you for joining me on this journey through time, memory, and celluloid wonder. Your time and interest are deeply appreciated, and I eagerly anticipate hearing your thoughts and reminiscences about guys and dolls. With cinematic admiration and heartfelt curiosity, your name.